while they're getting settled down now. Don't forget, the play will be tonight at 6 o'clock. Everybody who's in the play needs to be here by 4.30. Kids and everybody here this evening at 4.30. And the play's really going to be special. And it's supposed to clear up this evening, so I believe the weather will be all right. Uh, don't worry about it. Just glad it ain't about 10 degrees colder. <laughs> We'd be getting it right now. Uh, but uh, that'll be this evening at 6 o'clock. And then, of course, Wednesday night, come praying. We're going to take the big bus and go Christmas caroling. Anybody wants to go? We're going to that bus will seat 60. Are you they about fill it up today? Uh, and uh, we're going to take that and go Christmas caroling Wednesday night because school's out, right? Is all the schools out? By Wednesday, they will be, right? Oh, good night. For all these bunch of people. All the ones we have, all our kids school are out of school. But anyway, um, we'll do that Wednesday night. So don't forget that. In winter camp, this is for teenagers, young people, and it's a church-wide revival for everybody. Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, the 27th, 28th, 29th. We're going to have, I don't know, probably 100 teenagers here singing, and we're going to have food, and uh, they're going to have fun in the afternoon. We're going over here to the Valdez Rec. We're going to play we've got a volleyball tournament scheduled between Shining Light, Midview, and Rockingham. Girls volleyball. That'll be on, I think, Friday afternoon. No, no scratching, pulling hair, punching each other out. Good all clear, good fun. And we're also going to have a shooting range over there. So all these boys can shoot a gun. And they all uh, like guns. And we're going to get to shoot. It's all controlled and a good atmosphere. They're going to have a lot of fun. That'll be on Friday the 27th. So, you know that week after Christmas when it's boring and you're broke and mad because you didn't get what you want? That, that's those days that we have that. That's the 27th, 28th, 29th. Food will be here both days, Thursday and Friday. Free uh, dinner for everybody. And so uh, come and be with us on those nights. And on Friday night, the 27th, I'll be preaching a multimedia video presentation on what we're going to expect in 2024. And how to get ready for it. Talk about Hamas, Israel, Palestinian Israeli conflict, uh, the war on the drugs, the, the, I mean, the, the drug cartel, fentanyl coming from China, and everything that's going on in this world, and how young people can be ready for it. That will be Friday night, the 27th. If you have a teenager, make sure they're in that service that night. All right, Matthew chapter 2. Thank you for your patience. Matthew chapter 2. We're going to look at a little bit of the Christmas story here this morning. And uh, I hope that uh, this little thought that I have will be a blessing to you. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. That's what I preached on last week about that star. Look at verse 1 where it said wise men. Wise men. The Bible says that these men who came way up from the east and came to worship Jesus, the Holy Spirit called them fellers wise. Wise men. See, the Lord didn't look down there and say, all right, there's them Pharisees, there's them scribes, there's those Jewish leaders, they're wise. He didn't do that. The Lord didn't look down there and say, oh, there's a doctor of the law and he knows five languages and there's a studied history and he knows geography and geology and paleontologist and he's an archaeologist. and he, The Lord didn't do that. The Lord looked and he's seen them guys hunting Jesus. He said, there's your wise man right there. Now I want to preach this morning on that subject, wise men still. To this day, seek him. The Lord's definition of a wise person is a person who seeks the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. A person who seeks the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's think about this as men. These men are called wise for a reason, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let's talk about that today. First of all, they are wise who seek Christ. They're wise who seek Christ. Anybody, it's a little kid, they can be 10 years old. Says, Lord, I want to know you. I'll, Frankie does that. He's got, a, he's got a hunger to want to know God. And I was talking to him, late, trying to get him to sleep last night. He's so excited. And I hang down there. I said, now, Frankie, uh, 
I said, now listen, the Lord loves you. You know, we've had him since he's six months old, and uh, he's, he, he ain't going to get him away from her now. I guarantee you that. But uh, anyway, uh, she, he, he laid down, and I said, now, Frankie, we want to get saved. We want to know the Lord. He said, I want to. And, you know, he wants to know Bible stories. He wants to. That's a wise little fellow right there. That's a wise man. If a teenager comes in, and they'll come to me sometime, they'll say, Brother Danny, I go to high school, and they have people doing this, people doing that and everything, but I really want God to work in my life. That's a wise teenager. So an old drunk one time, he wasn't wise for that because alcohol, uh, alcohol means you're not wise. You drink alcohol. Uh, but he's out drunk one night, and he's down in a, down in a old hole in a uh, bottom of a field and like to froze to death and starved to death. And he woke up. They said when he woke up, uh, he woke up, he's nearly froze and starving to death. And he, woke up and he heard bells ringing. They're like ding, 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 ding. He heard some singing. And there's some Christians gathering over there at a group at a house to meet and sing Christmas songs. And he got up and he said, I'm just going to go see what that is. And he went over there and he listened to them and heard them bells ringing. And they started singing Away in the Manger. Silent night, joy the world. And he said, I want that. He said, when I, when I found out he died for me, I wanted that. And that guy got saved. That's a wise man. They are wise that seek the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Christ on the cross. Jesus said, or the Bible said, uh, uh, you shall seek me and you shall find me when you are searched for me with your whole heart. I'll never forget the night I got saved. I went seeking him. The night I got saved, I fell on my face. Everybody knows my testimony. I was up there running around Nebo, lost without God. I, I played in a rock and roll band when I everybody did back then. When I was 12, 13, 14, and the other guys in the band was several years older than me, and they was already doing stuff that I knew wasn't right. And I my mama kept praying. And mom kept praying. And I was out there and wandering around like this and wandering around like that. And I worked, uh, got a job. Uh, right after I graduated high school, I graduated high school when I was 17. And so um, your daddy snuck me in early in the first grade when I was five. And so I was 16 in the 12th grade and turned 17 in November of my senior year. Sure did. Right? And um, we didn't go to kindergarten. There wasn't no such thing, right? It just, um, they added 13 instead of 12 when they kicked God in the Bible out. But anyway, uh, I remember wobbling around like that and I remember like there was something missing and there was something missing in my life and I knew I could I'd done all this stuff and I played basketball for forever I mean every day hours every single day and music and basketball and you've heard my testimony that the guys in the band want to practice I was in basketball practice when I was like in the 10th grade and I was about 14 then I think and the the guys in the band come in and they said Danny we got that. We got band practice. Come on, we got band practice. And I looked at the coach. And I looked at them, and my coach said, "You got to make up your mind, boy. You gonna play basketball or music?" I said, "I'm gonna play basketball." And they left. Never seen them again after that. They got their stuff and got out. And I thank God that I did that. I thank the Lord because they was already smoking pot and, and and partying and stuff. And there ain't a doubt in my mind that my mom's prayers held me and kept me back from a lot of stuff that I could have got into. Listen, if you got a praying mom, by the way, kids, if you got all you teenagers in here, if you got a mama that sets some boundaries on you and makes you be home at a certain time and won't let you go, you ought to thank God for a parent like that. Uh, anybody that loves you enough to make some rules for you can go by and, and by the way, parent, you, you got to do that. You got to. I mean, you don't just let your dog run loose, do you? It'll get killed. It'll get run over. And people just let their parents run loose. Or their parents will let the kids get run loose. And that, neither one of them is right. So, so my mom prayed. And she prayed. And she prayed. And she prayed. And little by little by little, uh, the revival hit up at Nebo. And long story short, I got saved. But I'll talk more about that in a minute. But anyway, the Bible said that the wisest thing I ever did in my life was give my life, heart, and soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. There are wise men who seek Jesus Christ. Do you know the Lord this morning? Do you know you're saved? Do you know where you're going when you die? Do you know every one of them little boys and girls, they're going to be taught that back there. You know that song they sung? Walk, 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 no, there you are. You know that song? They'll never learn that at school. You'll never hear nothing like that in public school. And most of them will never hear it at home. They've not, they don't know a way in a manger. They don't know joy to the world. So they're raised completely secular. 
And they all think that Christmas is just completely secular. But the Bible said these men were wise who sought the Lord Jesus Christ. They sure did, buddy. They were wise who sought the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, it's, and then I want to say this. They are wise who try to understand the Bible. If you've got a hunger to know more about the Bible and to get it, you're a wise person. Matter of fact, the Bible said the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Make no mistake. Don't get education and wisdom mixed up. They're two different things. A person can have a lot of education and be dumber than a rock. And a person can have very to little education and be a wise person. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. We put all the emphasis today on education. Well, he's got this degree and he's got that degree. You know, I've met some of them who's got that degree. It ain't got enough sense coming out of the rain when it comes to God and the Bible and spiritual. So you make sure that you're a wise person is somebody who says, I want the Lord. I want the Bible. When I got saved, I immediately got a hunger for the Bible. Immediately. I didn't care who wrote it, how it got, I wasn't interested in criticizing it or, or anything like that. I just want it. I just want it. I was like that little girl that said, uh, this little girl went to a pet store, and it was around Christmas time, and God thought she was Christmas shopping, and she went to a pet store, and she said, do you have a rabbit? He said, oh, yes, honey, we've got plenty of little rabbits. Come right over here. He went out there this cage. He said, would you not like a nice furry little white rabbit? Or would you like a nice, cuddly, little gray rabbit? Or would you not like a nice, he's trying to get on her level, with a little brown, dark, speckled rabbit? She said, my python don't give a rip what color he is. <laughs> she said, boy, that's my kind of girl right there, boy. <laughs> and uh, she said, you're going to feed your snake. But, you know, that's what I was when I got saved. When I got saved, they said, people, don't listen to that preach. Don't go to that church. All churches full of hypocrites. All the, I said, I don't care what they are. I want God. I want to know that book. Somebody tell me what that book says. I want to know it. I, you have a hunger for the Word of God. Now, did you know the Bible has the answer to every problem in this world? This war going on over there, this was the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I showed you up here on the screen a couple of Sundays ago how that um, the Palestinians have that, that Gaza Strip. You know, Gaza's mentioned 19 times in the Bible, right? And, you know, God gave that land to Abraham and his descendants through Isaac. Not Ishmael. Ishmael is the father of all the Arab nations. Iraq, Iran, Sudan, all them around. You say, where do you get that? Now the Bible. You'll never hear it on the news. It's Ishmael and Isaac. And the Bible, you know what the Bible says about that man, Ishmael? It said, he shall be a wild man. Did that nail it or what? That's why gas is a high. They got it. And brother, you know what? It said, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand will be against him. Is that true or not? You know where you get that? From the Bible. You know, you know how you learn how to make decisions, young people? From the Bible. You know what constitutes a marriage? A man and a woman. You know where you get that? Out of the Bible. It'll help you think straight. They are wise who seek to know God's word. When you go to school and they put a little, little monkey here, a little bit bigger monkey here, a little bit bigger monkey here, and a little bit bigger monkey here, and a little bit bigger, and then finally there's a man. And they do that, and you say, oh, my goodness, is that the way? No, you just go to the Bible. Go to the Bible. Um, ask yourself the question, you know, uh, uh, if, 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 if the moon on, it pulls, the, pulls the ocean in and makes high tide and low tide, how come the moon don't pull, pull fresh water? Oh, it's getting quiet in here. Now, now they say it's because salt has uh, electronic magnetic radiation attracted to gravity and all that. Uh, you got to be careful about stuff like that. You better be watch about science falsely so-called. Uh, if, if the Big Bang happened and every scientist in the world who says way back 13 billion years ago, bang, there was an explosion. And all the planets and stars come out of that thing and we're still moving that way, by the way, like a million miles an hour flying out in the middle of nowhere. And they say, well, where did that first bit of information come from? And if the Big Bang happened and slain all them planets, why are two of them planets spinning backwards? They don't know. 
I finally said, he said, I don't know. And the preacher said, I know why. And he said, why? He said, God did that just to make fools out of people who believe stuff like that. You know what you get? You get your information from the Bible. And I'm going to say this morning, unapologetically, I'm not a, I'm not a scientist. I'm a, I'm a Bible preacher. And that gives me knowledge of science and history from the Bible. I, I don't claim to be an expert in all of that. But I know one thing. This right here will stand when the world's on fire. Let God be true and every man a liar. I get in all kind of stuff like that. That's one of my favorite subjects is 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 talking, you know stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, let's let's all let's all think about that. They are wise which understand God's word. You want to know the future? I can tell you what it is according to this book right here. Not that I'm smart, but I've got a book that tell me. Learn your Bible. Make up your mind. You're going to go through it this year. I, I guarantee you, three fourths of people sitting in here this morning have probably never read the entire Bible all the way through. And it's because of your, your laziness, of your lack of respect for it, or you just don't care. I don't know what the problem is. But you make up your mind, hey, I'm going to read every word. Jesus said that man one time. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That includes Habakkuk, Malachi, Joel, Nahum, all of them Old Testament, Isaiah, Jer- You say, well, I can't understand it. He didn't say you had to understand it. Just read it. As you continually read the Bible, God will reveal it to you as you're able to receive it and need to. They are wise who seek the Bible. I don't know what you want to do. Everybody's got a world philosophy. Everybody's got their view on what's going on in the world. But I, by the help of the Lord, as your pastor and your friend, I choose to view everything in the world through the lens of this scripture right here and say, this is right and everything else is wrong and disagree. Take a pick and believe what you want to. They are wise that seek the Lord. Let me say this. They are wise that do the work of the Lord. We've had people ask, like yesterday, decent day. We've been out there blowing snow and, and, and knocking on doors and it freezing cold and everything. But sometimes people say, why, why do y'all do this? Why do you do this? Because they are wise. When, when a bus worker goes out and knocks on doors like they did hundreds of them yesterday. When you knock on somebody's door, you know what we're seeing? We're seeing the big picture. We are seeing the big picture, y'all. The big picture of one of these days when we get into eternity and heaven, nothing else is going to matter. Nothing else will matter then except where are them boys? Where are them girls? Where are them men? Now, there, there's nothing wrong going hunting or fishing or whatever you want to do. I mean, that stuff, you can be put it in prior, prioritize your time. But listen, wise people are those that do the word of the Lord and the work of the Lord. Kelly, she, I think she left yesterday morning. I left before she did come down here because they, they brought breakfast for us yesterday. Um, and I think she left at 9 o'clock and got home about 10 o'clock last night. And I'll do the same thing today. Up at 6 this morning, and it'll be late tonight when she gets home. I don't, I don't make her do that. She does it I tell her, you better take it easy. But she does that because she wants to. In my opinion, a wise person says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to invest some time in people that the Lord cares about. Because, see, you don't know what kind of influence you're having on somebody else. I've never told you this, what I'm getting ready to tell you. Probably part of my testimony, and I didn't realize it until Debbie gave me a letter. Now, I'm going to read this. This is a letter that my Aunt B wrote to me and my two sisters, Sandy and Debbie. She wrote this when I think I was about 13. I was playing in the band at that time. My Aunt B was a godly woman. She loved the Lord. I'm telling you, I, I, I don't know about this testimony. You might not agree with it, but this was her testimony. She said when she was about five years old, her mom, my Aunt Grandma Be- uh, Beam, Floor beam from up spruce pine. She told her, she said, you go down there and draw me some water out of the well. And she said, she didn't do it. And she said, I didn't know what mom told me. And she said, I walked outside and went down this little place and I saw the devil. She said, I saw him had chains rattling. And she said, it's good. I'm just giving you her testimony. I don't know if she didn't make it up. And she got saved and she lived right the rest of her life. Isn't that something? Well, my Aunt B was a godly woman. Her, my mom, and my Aunt Shirley sang in a trio. They'd go around churches and sing, stuff like that, all over the country. 
And I didn't know this. Matter of fact, I never seen this until about a month ago when it was my birthday and Debbie brought it to me. My oldest sister, Sandy, who died with cancer when she's 40 years old. And then my second sister, a lot younger than me, sitting right over there. And she wrote this letter, Dear Sandy, Debbie, and Danny. Now remember now, I'm out in rock band when she wrote this. I guess you're surprised to get a letter from old Aunt B. But I am here alone this evening and was praying for you and wanted to talk to you. You see, that was my Aunt B was praying for me when I was in that band, and I didn't know it. I had no idea. That's why when we have prayer meeting, y'all, when we when we go there, you don't you say, I went and it didn't do a bit of good. You don't know that. She never lived to see this. She said, I wanted to talk to you. I thought I would write. This is to me and my two sisters. And I want to tell you that I'm very proud of you and thankful for you, everyone. You are so fine, talented, and intelligent, of course. I am praying. Listen to this. I am praying that you will use it for God. You could be such a wonderful blessing to so many and lead young people to Jesus. What do you think about that? You see, God don't see things the way men you see it. We look at ah, them old women out there. Though. Listen, there was a godly woman in Nebo on her knees praying, God, get a hold of Danny. Use him to lead young people to Jesus. I was out there running around like an idiot. And most of you your own soul, most of all. Sandy, I heard you singing at PTA meeting. That's my oldest sister. It was so beautiful. Please, you, Debbie, and Debbie, and any of the others you want, start you a gospel quartet. It will bless you and give glory to God and bless lots of others. I hope you won't laugh at this. I can't write, but I love you, and I want to see you do well. We'll be praying for you. Happy to hear you singing for Jesus sometime soon. Hoping you'll be singing for Jesus sometime soon. Love ain't me. Guess what? I was singing for Jesus. And I didn't know my Aunt B done that. I didn't know about that letter that she gave to me the other day. And see, she was a wise person, y'all. You know, some of them old preachers up in the mountains, some of them didn't have a third grade education. And I'm not against education. I mean, you should, you should learn all you can the right way. And they couldn't even read. And they'd get in the Bible. They'd get in the Word of God. Some of them learned how to read, reading the, reading the Bible. And they'd get up and preach, and the fire of God would fall, and lives would be changed, and hearts would be touched. That's a wise person. You see, it's not like the world. The world looks at it like they think success is the best thing you do. But they are wise with seeking the Lord. I heard about Curtis Bradford. He's a preacher down in South Carolina. True story. I'll tell you this and I'm through. When he was seven years old, it was Christmas on Christmas Eve. He, a long time ago, seven years old, could not go to sleep. He said he laid in his bed and he tried to go to sleep and he couldn't go to sleep. Seven years old. Mom and dad stayed up late, make sure that all the kids in the bed. They went to bed. He said at 2 o'clock in the morning, he woke, he, he, he got up out of bed, he wasn't asleep, and he snuck down the stairs like this to go get into his presence. Because technically it is Christmas Day at 2 o'clock in the morning, right? Amen. How many of y'all done that? With I did, I did. I'm, I get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, right? and uh, um, he, he's down there and he's he got a, a, a cowboy outfit, cowboys and, and some little guns, and he had a little drum set. And he, had, and he couldn't play the drum, but he was tearing into everything else. And he heard something, he looked, and there's his daddy. And he's his daddy. He said, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. But he said, luckily, his daddy smiled. He said, it's all right, son. And his daddy sat down in that big old chair and watched his son. Oh, he had to explain it all to him. You see, Dad, like this. Here's the way he shoot these six shooters. Here he, he went through all that stuff, played, showed him all his toys, showed him how, how to do his cowboy outfit. He showed him his boots. He's showing all that. 
And finally, he just laid down there on the floor about 4 o'clock in the morning, fell asleep. And his daddy picked him up, seven years old, and carried him up the steps and put him in the bed. Years and years and years went by. 20, 30, 40 years went by. It was also a Christmas Eve. And at this Christmas Eve, all the family was gathered around in there, and his dad was laying in the bedroom. He'd had a car wreck, and he got cancer, and all the treatments they'd give him, and the chemo, and the stuff they'd give him, he couldn't, he couldn't walk. He laid wet. Weighed less than 90 pounds. And Curtis went in to see him. And daddy said, I'd like to come enjoy Christmas, son. If you'll help me. He said, daddy, what do you mean? He said, well, I, his daddy could, he said, we couldn't get up. So he got his clothes. He helped him get his clothes on while they was waiting downstairs. And he shaved him. He said, hey, his daddy wanted to be shaved. Because he couldn't shave him. He took that razor. And he said, put that lather on his face and shaved him. And his daddy would tell him, this part of my beard grows one way and this part of my beard grows the other way and you have to do it this way here and do it that way there. And uh, he said, uh, he got all that and he said he picked his little daddy up. Weighed less than 90 pounds. He's a big strong man by now. Preacher. Took him downstairs and set him in that chair. And the family opened gifts and they all eat and they had a good time. He said about 15 minutes, he said the pain was so bad, he couldn't. He said that pain was so bad, he couldn't stand it. He said, I'm going to have to go back and lay down. And he got him, picked him up out of that chair. And he said, as he was starting up them steps, his mind went back to many, many, many years ago when his daddy carried him up them same steps and put him in bed. And he said, now it's my turn to carry my daddy. He said, I laid daddy down in the bed. And he said, daddy pointed to a tape player, a tape deck over here. And he said, turn that tape on it. And it was somebody reading the Bible. And he put that tape in. And it said, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again, receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And he said, me and daddy smile. And he said, I grabbed daddy's hand. And I said, God, I thank you for saving my daddy. And God, I thank you for saving me. And he said, that a few days later. After Christmas, Daddy went home to be with the Lord. And he said, I realized that that was the greatest. That's a Christmas story, y'all. That's a Christmas story. The Christmas story and a bunch of uh, retard nuts in Hollywood dancing, jumping up out of cakes and getting drunk. The Christmas story is of people who seek Jesus Christ and trust Him and live for Him and put their life in His hand. That's a Christmas story. As a wise person. He said, Daddy, I'll see you again. He said, my daddy died just a few days after Christmas. Massive heart attack. He loved Christmas. Sometimes we forget what it's all about. And I see people in here this morning wiping tears. Because you got a daddy over there. Or you got a mom up there. And that's why the Bible said, that wise men, the greatest thing you can do with your life today, friend, is give it. Jesus Christ. 100%. Don't hold back. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Come to the instruments. Everyone bow your head please and close your eyes please just for a moment. Nobody's moving. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. If you're here this morning while she plays softly. And deep, deep down in your heart, you know you want to seek the Lord. We're going to have a little time of prayer. She's going to play. And I want you to let God work in your heart. Would you, ma'am? You got a tr- You got a problem, sir? Alcohol, drugs, whatever, whatever, lifestyle. You need to get your life right. Be a good time just to slide right out of your seat come down here and get down around this altar and say, Jesus, I'm coming just like them wise men did. I'm coming to find Jesus. You come on right now. Come on. Come on. Is there a Christian here this morning? Just say, preacher, I need the Lord. 
I need the Lord to work in my life. Come on, come on, right now. That's right, that's right. Others, others need to come. Come on, some of y'all come and pray for this young man coming here. These are, come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Amen. Come on, just slide right out of your seat and come right now. Amen. Some of you men, pray for this young man here. This man over here just lost his mother just a couple of days ago. Y'all come pray with him. Others need to come this morning up here. Amen. Will you men over here pray with this young man? Let God speak to you. Come on, ma'am. Come on. Come on, let's pray. Let's just come up here and pray right now. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on right now. Now's your change. Now's your change. Let's do it. Let's do business with God. Amen. Amen. Come on right now. Lady, I need a good lady that can pray. A good lady that can pray. Amen. Come on, Danielle. Let's do it right here. Amen. Let God let God help you this morning. Come on. Others. Others. Others need to come. Amen. Let God speak your heart. Let God speak your heart right now. Right now is your good time to come. Come on, kids, teenagers, boys, girls. You say, hey, I ain't going to be dumb. I'm going to seek Jesus. I want to seek the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to seek Him first. I want to seek Him first and let my whole life be seeking Jesus. Amen. You can look this way. People are praying. God's speaking to hearts here this morning. Amen. 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 You come right now. You need to come right now. Good time to come. Good time to come and pray. Good time to come and pray, Mama. Good time to come and pray, Daddy. Seek Jesus. Wise men still seek Him. Wise men still seek Him. You come on right now. Come on right now. Wise men still seek Him. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. You come right now. While we wait. Let God speak to your heart right now. That's right. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's right. Keep praying. Keep praying. God, see people doing business up here this morning. Amen. There's people doing business up here today. Some we just visited yesterday. Never been here before till, till today. Amen. Still works. Still works. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. That's right. Amen. You know, the smartest teenager in the world is the one that seeks Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. I want you, if you don't mind, bow your head one more time. I'm going to pray with you before you leave. These bunch of them up here is getting right. Some are getting right with the Lord. If you're here this morning, you need to you need to get saved. Now's your time to do it. Maybe you can't kneel. Maybe you can't kneel. Just bow your head right now and say, Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I can't do it for you. You have to do this on your own. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And right now, I trust Him, and Him only, as my Savior. My only hope for heaven. Will you do that? Will you do that? Amen. Some are doing it. We're going to have a lot of people saved here this morning. I believe that. I believe that. I won't hear the report for like a while. Got back down in the back, around here. Thank the Lord for it. Maybe you're watching from home and online this morning. Right now, you pull that big old 18-wheeler over on the side of the road or get down beside that couch or that bed. Or maybe that jail cell. Just call on Jesus. Call him. Seek him. Seek him today. You'll be a wise person. Father, do what ought to be done in every heart, in every life. God, do a miracle. Help us, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Love you this morning. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for still speaking to heart. Thank you that we still have a little bit of freedom left to preach and to point people to Jesus. God, help every person here this morning get right with you while they still have time. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. So I'm still praying now. Leave, leave your camera on. Leave the cameras on there, y'all. Even after I dismiss. Amen. Thank God, our girls. Amen. Anytime you see a kid wanting the Lord, you better jump on that right quick. Don't hinder them. I've had people tell me, my little girl wouldn't go to the altar and I wouldn't let her. Man, you crazy. 
Let them go. Huh? As long as they're being sincere, you let them go. God will bless you for them. Amen. All right. All right. Uh, we won't have the final report right the while. The Lord's got it. I will tell you tonight how many people got saved in junior church. There's people packed all over this building in every nook and cranny in here. We're trying to build a new building over there. We can keep put kids in. So you pray. We got about three acres of land we'll give you. You can find somewhere to put it. Uh, then we're here to dig it out, move it, then we're going to try to build a building over there. That's, that's the plan. So you pray for us about that, please. All you folks watching from home and online too. Okay? All right. Now, when I dismiss, they're going to be coming in here getting these gifts and putting them on the bus. So make way for them. Use these doors or whatever if you can. And so they're going to try to get this stuff out of here. And try to now, be back tonight. Everybody in the play at 430. Everybody else, 6 o'clock. Don't miss that tonight. It's really, really going to be special. You ain't got nothing else to do. Come on tonight. And you'll. Enjoy. it's going to be special. So don't miss that. There might be kids here that want to be in a play. You can jump in late. Come on this evening at 430. We'll put you in it. That's right. Put you in. All right. All hearts clear. All right. Don't forget, winter camp. You can read the signs going out. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We're having food Thursday after church, Friday after church, basketball, volleyball, four-wheelers. We're going to the motorcycle track over there at uh, 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 Todd's track. That's where Dax trained. He's training in Florida right now, of course. But uh, uh, it's a real motocross track. We got side-by-sides and four-wheelers. In favor, say aye. All opposed by the same sign. 400 to 2. I think I think they need to come right here. Come forward, Brother Grinch. Come forward, Brother Grinch. Come on. You're brave enough to wear it. I'm brave enough to get you up here. <laughs> uh, they are going to sing. I saw mommy kisses. <laughs> no, they ain't. I, ain't I, I see. Jingle Bell Rock. All right. Jingle Bell, Jingle. Oh, he's doing it. <laughs> No, you better not be singing that. Uh, uh, let me, uh, let's see. How about this? Police got me now. Police got me now. <laughs> How are you doing it? All right. No, no. We're going to. Who would like to hear them quote the Christmas story by heart? No, I'm just messing with them. That looks nice to me. I like it. I like it. I, I, what did somebody say? They want to sing? Oh, your lights ain't on, brother. I, I ain't got that. I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, he, he gave me a start. Okay. All right, we're going we're gonna to let these guys dismiss us together in prayer. And uh, uh, then, uh, then you're liberty to go. Please, seriously, be careful getting out of here. Kids run all over that parking lot. Take it real slow, okay? All right. All right, wait a minute. Y'all got to dismiss us. Go ahead. Let's bow our head in prayer. See y'all at 12. Go ahead.